Microsoft Clarity's Smart Events to optimize even faster. Let's go ahead and dive in. We are here inside of Microsoft Clarity, just checking out the main dashboard. And if we scroll down, we're gonna see this thing right here that says Smart Events. If we hover, we're gonna kind of get a little bit of a definition, basically saying it's something that allows you to see key user actions and Clarity does automatically capture some depending on how your site is built. Like if you have a Shopify store, e-com store, it might see something different like add to cards, begin checkout and those type of things um, compared to a site who's maybe just a blog. They might see, you know, signups and these other things or downloads um, compared to a different type of site. So depending on how your site is built, you might see some automatic things in here or you might decide to create your own. Let's go ahead and review that real quick. So we go into our settings. I wish they would have a little dot here where we can see like, hey, go create your own, kind of like we have to do with our uh, with some of our funnels where we can edit right in here. Um, but let's go to settings and we'll see how we create our smart events. So over here in our left-hand nav, we see smart events here, and then it's going to load up. I highly encourage you to always go through and kind of check out these learn more documents because Clarity actually does a really fantastic job of explaining all of the things to us that we whatever it is that we want to know. So if you haven't done this in a while um, or you're doing this for a new type of client or new type of instance you haven't done before, it's always a great idea to go through and review just in case something has changed and you just need a quick refresher. So again, fantastic documentation from the team at Clarity, which a lot of platforms Forms don't do this for us, but I just love the screenshots. I love the all of the visuals so I don't have to read too much and I'm good to go to understand what's going on. But for you, what you can see through here is uh, we can go through and even something that might be kind of like out of the box, like it's it's defining it's on its own. I can come in here and choose to define this in a slightly different way. So this one saying express checkout is what it's looking for. Button click on express checkout. Um, but maybe I wanna do another button click as, you know, um, enroll in my course or something like that. I can choose to do whatever it is that I want to for this key event, or excuse me, this smart event. And same thing with contact us. Maybe we have something else that is call us or reach out or talk to support or whatever it is. I can go through and choose to add something else. As we can see by default, it's already choosing contact us clicks that send an email or chat. So these are out of the box, what it's already doing, but I can choose to do something different in addition to what it's already doing, which is great that we can modify these things. There are other ways we can do API events. Again, amazing documentation, but this is a little bit more advanced, probably not a, what a lot of us are going to want to do. And there's also page visits. So obviously the contact us, depending on how it is that you're trying to measure this, maybe not page page visits would be it, but maybe it is. Maybe you only want to know those that fill out the form or that even um, consider filling out the form. Maybe you want to know that anybody that gets to the page where it says contact us, not just a button. So that could be another way as well. Um, so you can go through and choose which page to um, send that on. So something else you can do is you can go in and create a brand new event. And then you can always go through and edit as well. So one note, when you create your uh, key, excuse me, your smart event, I can have this key event in my head right now. Once you create your smart event, it does not start collecting data until you create it. So even though that, you know, Clarity does have the page views, it does have all those things uh, for past data since you turned it on, it will not also start creating data for your smart event. And so I just, that's a little bit of a little side note for you there. So you, before we create this other one, you might be wondering, well, why do I care about the smart events? Well, one, as you can see in your dashboard, it makes it nice and easy to see the things that are happening. And you can very quickly go to either recordings or heat maps of people that submitted a form or something like that. So you're able to go ahead um, and very quickly get to there. However, you can also, let's go into our filters, you can also go through and adjust whatever it is your logic that you're doing. So maybe I only want to see people that 
um, login um, on whatever it is that I'm doing, whatever it is that I'm looking for. Or maybe I want to exclude the people that log in. And so that way I can go through and review my offer page for people that are not logging in. So if I click on, I'm actually going to look at probably, um, let's do a custom date range. Let's just grab something a little bit bigger where I think we were doing a promo during this time for this sales page. And so we're going to scroll down a little bit. And this is where I like to go through and grab my pages here. I know I can click on heat map right here and then find my page. But for me, I just happen to like go through here. So we just happen to choose our home page and I wanted to come into heat map. So right now what we're saying is I want to see the people that are um, on our home page, but that don't log in. And so we're going to give it a moment to load and kind of do its thing. And so here is where people actually log in. So they click to log in. So there might be something wrong with our logic here, which is fine. So what we're going to have to do is either create a new one or modify that. So what we're going to go ahead and do, we're just going to go back to our settings and it happens to drop us right back to where we were. And we're going to create a new event. And so we can kind of look all of these if we wanted to do any of these and start editing from there but we're going to just go through and start from scratch and say next and then i'm going to look for what the button text is called i'm going to say community i think it's community login let's see if we can find that there it is so we're going to go ahead and choose this one now i could technically also do page visits community login on particular pages maybe a sales page or something like that but for the sake of this example we're just going to go ahead and keep it here so we're going to say next and then we're going to say click to log in so it's not necessarily an actual login it's people that go click on that button to log in so we're going to go ahead and save and it says your smart event data will start to appear within an hour so now I can't use my smart event when I go back to my heat maps here because it's excluding uh, the old login. But here in a few days, I'll be able to come back to this report and have my other my new smart event, basically people that are clicking to log in and I will have this part removed. Um, if I have that smart event excluded. So that way, as we're going through and optimizing, obviously this is the home page, but we'd be able to go through and understand, okay, of the people that are here for not to log in, what is it that they're doing? So meaning everybody else that we're trying to get into our free community or maybe into one of our products, what is it that they're doing? So that way we can make better decisions and better optimization decisions to optimize the pages because it's kind of hard sometimes when you're looking at your scroll and maybe you're not getting as many people to scroll because there's so many people that are choosing to log in. Like maybe it's a big page that people go to log in. And we're going to give it a sec just to kind of give you that visual of sometimes it's just hard to see um, the people that are scrolling down or not scrolling down. And you think maybe there's something wrong with the top of your page because there's not really scrolling. You see, here's half the people drop off right here. This is a home page. So I would kind of expect that because they're going to be kind of coming using the top nav and everything like that. But if this was a sales page, we'd be thinking something was wrong with the top part of the page and we needed to adjust and we need to do all these optimization things. But what if, what if all the people, the hundred of people that are coming through here and clicking on this community login button was skewing our data? So this way, now once we have our smart event and we finally have the data to start using it, we would be then be able to come through here, add that smart event so it's excluding, let's come back into where we do that, right here. So remember, we'd go through and find our smart event once it has data. Um, it would be click to log in, and then we would exclude it and making sure that it would be applied. And then we'd be able to see the people that are viewing the sales page or viewing whatever page, then at, actually be able to take some good decisions off of that. We'd have a more useful truth of the scroll. We have a more useful truth of the attention map. So we'd have a more useful truth of everything else because we're excluding the people that are there just to log in.
And so let's go back to our settings real quick. And if we come into our smart events and we're going to go make sure we have this learn more here, um, we do have, let's click on our smart events is where we're at. You will eventually, so there's smart events here and we're going to go to smart events here. So why, you know, there's just apparently two different pages where you can learn more. Just wanted to kind of point that out to you. And we can kind of go through and review this again. Very, very similar to what you're seeing, but just it's kind of interesting that they have two. Not sure if that's an error or whatnot, um, but we see that. And eventually, and somewhere in this documentation, you will see something uh, or any of these documentations, you'll see something about a custom tag. And I'm actually going to use this right here to find it custom tags right here and so i'm bringing this up in this particular workshop so you can know that there is a difference between custom tags and smart events custom tags is basically something that you can use either on the site or most likely use something inside of google tag manager we do have um, other workshops and videos and part of our courses on this but it is different than your smart events so smart events as we just sh showed you is basically looking at page views clicks and these type of things and some of these automatic things that you're going to be able to utilize a custom tag is something where for instance if you have a wordpress site or some a blog and you wanted to go through and grab the page post author or the page post type or those type of things you would be able to go through and do that with a custom tag again it's a little bit more advanced we do have other videos on there but i just wanted to keep your verbiage correct when we talk about custom tags versus smart event both of them are incredible if we wanted to come into our dashboard and create some filters um, this is our newer one so we don't have one in here um, but I can go through and show you in just a sec what a um, custom tag could look like. So we have here our smart events and it's not here under our custom tags here. We're going to go scroll down a little bit farther and what we'd expected to see is under this section where it's custom. You can see custom tags again. We can learn more this way um, and you can kind of see these other options with this. And so I'm just going to show you what it kind of would look like. I'm bringing over our old testing account here. And so we have a custom tag and this is where we have page post author and page post type. This is just very um, basic examples. So that way we can see if we wanted to see all the blog posts by Mercer versus for all the blog posts by Jeff or me or Manisha or whoever it is that we're using or page post type, meaning like a sales page or a blog post. And we can be able to kind of see the difference between those. Now, why would we want to be able to do that? Like maybe you're just trying to see uh, to be able to compare those or kind of be able to filter by those or whatnot. So very, very different case for these, but it is a thing that possibly if you're like, well, my smart events aren't doing the thing that I want them to do. I, I'm not being able to take action and do those things that I want to do. I need something a little bit more custom. Well, then if you need something a little bit more custom, look into those custom tags, go watch the other videos we have on those and see if this is something that you're going to need to be able to help you answer those questions with that. Um, I would recommend using Google Tag Manager with those for that as well. And then if you are running into roadblocks, there is a free community for you to be able to use and ask the questions. We've been uh, working really closely with Microsoft and uh, every time we have a question that we don't know the answer to, we just send them an email and they're usually fantastic at responding really quickly for us so we can make sure everyone stays informed. But if you're inside of Measure U, there's a free community of the Student Lounge. As you can see, almost a couple of thousand people in here. So if you do have questions, make sure that you ask them in here. So if you get stuck, we'd love to help you out with that. And that is the basics of your smart events with Microsoft Clarity and how to use them to optimize and go faster. And if you want to join the free community at Measure U, just go to measureu.com slash workshop. And again, if you have those questions, even if it's not about Microsoft Clarity, we'd love to help you out. Just reach out, join the student lounge in there and ask your questions. We'd love to hear from you. And that was using Microsoft Clarity's smart events to optimize even faster.